Okay, here we go. Barking Chihuahua Cafe. This is what our homepage looks like. And this is what our homepage is going to look like when we get done. So the first thing we're going to do is take this three column layout and create a two column layout. We're going to start that in the thesis skin editor. And we're going to look at boxes. Now these are HTML boxes, right? As opposed to the boxes that we talked about here. Don't confuse those two things. This box can create a box over in the HTML box editor, but this is really just an HTML thing, okay? And if we look at the structure of the default theme, what we have is the body as wrapping, well, every page has a body. And then inside of that, we have a container. And this container is a page width container. So it sits in the middle of the site. And then on, inside the container, first we have a nav menu. Then we've got a header container. And if we open up our header container, it contains the site title and the site tagline. Okay. And then we look at the three column layout we have here. We have this container that holds the three columns. Column 1, column 2, and column 3. Column 1 has the WordPress loop. And on the page, it has a single post box. That is, it shows a single style of post, like a page, right? And in it, it's configured to show the headline and the content. Although you can also add the author avatar or description. You could use an excerpt instead, number of comments, categories, tags, thesis post image, thesis thumbnail, WordPress featured image, any of that stuff can go in here. And if you had defined taxonomies, then taxonomies would also show up in this. I mean, custom taxonomies. So you can drag a custom taxonomy into place and have that show up as well. OK, so that's column one, which is the content column. Column two is the widget column. And it's just column two with a widget setting in here. And the same thing is true with column three. And then the footer is just a footer container. It contains the thesis attribution and a WordPress admin link. OK, so those are the HTML elements that are showing up in the main page. What we're going to do is create a brand new one, a new HTML element. And that new HTML element is going to be a box. So we open up this thing that says Add Boxes. And the type of box to add is going to be a container. OK, we're going to create an HTML container, and we're going to call it two columns. We're going to add the box. Here it is. This little button here shows or hides the box options. I'm going to open that up and that allows me to set an HTML ID, an HTML class, and if for some reason or other I want a hook around this thing, I could put a hook name in here and it'll automatically create the hook. So for example, in order for columns to work, I need this HTML class to match a package I'm going to define in a minute. So the class is going to be columns2. Okay? And this is actually I'm going to call it columns32 which means, in my jargon, the page is divided up into three parts, but it only has two columns, which means that one column is going to be two-thirds wide and the other column is going to be one-third wide. So that's, that's my own way of keeping track of this, because I'm going to use a columns two in a minute. And I'm just going to say the unique hook name, I'm going to call this as what am I going to call this? I'm going to call it content. We're not going to actually use this hook. I don't want to call it content. I want to call it main content. We're not going to use it. I just want you to see it. I want you to see how that's created. And what it will do is it will create thesis hook before container main content, thesis hook container main content top, thesis hook container main content bottom, and thesis hook after container main content. And that's what it'll create automatically four hooks based on this name, main content. Okay? So we're not going to use the hook because you'd have to use programming to use the hook, and we're not going to do any programming, but that's how you create your own hooks in Thesis. 
and we could go to the admin options and say we want this box to all re always open up by default in the template editor but I'm not going to choose that so this is good enough for me and we'll just go ahead and close it and then shift and then drag to bring it into position and if I want it in the container I just drop it in the heading of this container like that just drop it and now it shows up in the top and to move it within the container I don't need to hit shift so I can just move it here and I'm going to move it below the header so I'm going to have two columns above three columns and now what I'm going to do is take column one out of column three so shift drag and drag it up into column two and then I'm going to take column two and shift drag and drag it up into column two and then I'm going to take three columns out of this entirely so I'm going to shift drag and bring it over here and drop it there so now I have two columns here except I've got them reversed I've got column one at the bottom so I'll just drag it up put it at the top so now I've got column one and column two and I've got this two columns thing and if I hit save template we can go over and take a look at the site it's not going to look right but you're going to see it looks different the reason it doesn't look right is because column one is full width and column two is full width because I haven't created a package yet that defines this however you will see if we go back over to the to the home page it's still retaining this the three column style right because all I did was change the the page template so I'll come back over to the thesis skin editor we'll click on CSS and then we're going to create a new package and it is going to be a columns package and if we add the columns package we'll give it a name let's just call it two columns and we're going to give it a reference I'm going to call it columns 3 2 I'll show you what that reference is for in a minute and then the CSS selector that I want is also going to be columns 3 2 although I think I I think I put a hyphen in there when I created this the class so columns 3 2 that's the CSS selector notice the difference between selector and class selector here will take any selector right so you could put a pound sign in front of this so you're picking up the ID and you could even be more specific right you could add other selector elements the selector can be as long as you want it to be so this can be a way for you to create very specific CSS for a very specific application it doesn't just have to be a single selector in here but we've created this named it two columns given it a reference of columns 3 2 given it a CSS selector of columns 3 2 come over to options select the number of columns we're going to select two column one width in this case the column one width is going to be 600 and what did I say I was going to do 615 and 11 so 626 pixels and I want it to float to the left and column one padding I'm not going to give it any top padding but the right padding is going to have 11 pixels and the left padding is going to have 22 pixels it's important to note that the way this works is this padding comes off of the overall width so 626 is the overall width of the column and then 11 pixels of padding and 22 pixels of the padding means that oh no 636 636 means that the content is going to be 600 pixels wide so I have a content of 600 pixels with a left a right padding of 11 pixels and a left padding of 22 come over to column 22 or column 2 it's going to be 300 pixels I'm going to float it to the right I'm going to I'm going to give it 30 pixels of top padding here right padding is going to have 22 pixels left padding is going to have 11 pixels and I'm going to hit save to that
Now if I wanted some additional CSS, I could actually write additional CSS right here if I felt like I needed to, but I'm not going to need to. Now what this does is this automatically creates the CSS for this two column thing, including clearing the divs. If, if you know anything about floats and CSS and HTML, when we said we wanted one thing floating left, another thing floating right, this automatically creates the clearing of those divs so that stuff that happens below it doesn't try to float beside it. Now, in order, however, for this to show up, we have to take this reference and place it over here. You can have packages that you don't actually write CSS for. So you could have packages that you want to keep around, but you don't want to be added to your skin because you don't need it at the moment. So there doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one correspondence between your packages and this. This is where you tell Thesis what CSS you want to write. And so in this case, we need to add the reference, which is ampersand columns underscore 32. So columns underscore 32. If we hit save and compile, it's now written the CSS. And if we refresh this, whoops, we refresh this. Oh, I think I must be missing something. Columns 3, 2. Columns 3, 2. I called the CSS selector was columns hyphen 3, 2. It must be a different CSS selector. So you come back over to this. And we look at the CSS selector. It's column 3, 2, not columns. So this is where that correspondence has to happen, right? This HTML class needs to be the same as the CSS selector. Notice that the HTML class doesn't have a period in front of it. That's because it's a class, so it automatically has a period. If you put a period in here, it's going to confuse it. Same thing with HTML ID. If you chose to put an ID in, you don't have to put the pound sign in. It automatically supplies the pound sign. Okay, I'm going to save the template, come back over, refresh it, and lo and behold, now what we have is a two-column template with the sizes that we specified that we wanted. Okay, so our pages have that, and our home page still has this. Okay.